drain the swamp. You know, that was a big thing was hashtag drain the swamp. Uh, and I think the political insiders, Washington, D.C., is just so entrenched that uh, they've done everything they can to prevent him from even being able to try and accomplish some of that stuff. I mean, th- that's all evident, too, you know, but it, it, it's, it's just sad that uh, people should all come together, especially on a crisis, and not wish this crisis would continue to throw up smoke screens and smoke and mirrors and, you know, uh, wish that it keeps going on. We, we need to wish it goes away. And actually, some of the greatest things that have happened is it showed how fast America could respond. Building a hospital in the Javits Center in New York in 24, 48 hours, yep. bringing in that uh, hospital ship to New York, they had to drain the, the bottom of the ocean to get it in there. It just shows how great America is, and it shows now how the Blue Angels are and um, the Thunderbirds are going across America and celebrating America, man. That's I think right. tomorrow Light they're coming up. to Tampa. Light it up. You know, I mean, there's something mm-hmm. on our Facebook page. You can actually see it, and it's America strong. And no matter what they're trying to do, whoever's trying to do it, America will be Number one, as always, USA all the way. And and thank our veterans for that. Well, I think you've seen it all across the country. And even in uh, red states like California, you know, that uh, somebody might sit there and think, uh, <clears throat> you know, well, they're all. But, I mean, they are resisting this. It's just so un-American for us to be closed up, cooped, you know, and not being able to have our freedoms. You know, I don't care who you are. You've got the greatest country to live in. And uh, if there's anything that this has shown the last 30 to 45 days is uh, maybe it gets you to appreciate just what kind of freedoms that we do have. And, you know, from that standpoint. Yeah, not only live for, but to ride for, man, oh, because yeah. this is born <laughs> oh, yeah. to ride, man. We're ready. <laughs> yeah. Man, we're just ready to get out and ride and get, okay. like Deb said last week, wind therapy. Yes. Right, Deb? Did yes, you say that? I did, wind therapy. A lot of people need that on a daily basis sometimes. So what do we have on uh, tap for today on Born to Ride radio well, well you know you never know exactly what were you gonna say Dan? <laughs> yeah, i was gonna say we we did get several calls today you know the restaurants and bars are allowed to open uh next monday and some of them have contacted us already and um but you know they're gonna abide by the rules and what they're supposed to do but it's everyone's personal choice and that's what's cool about this is if you still don't feel comfortable being in a, a, a big crowd or environment you know that's your your choice your personal decision but um, some of them are going to um, move forward and uh, start getting their bike nights going back again and, you know, getting awesome. their crowds. So awesome. eh, it does feel good. <laughs> After 25 years of doing this, you, you wonder how you can miss it. But let's go. Let's get this cranked up. <laughs> yeah, maybe, you know, baseball, football, everything else, hockey. You know, a lot of the people need to come together that are out of work right now. And the bartenders, waitresses and you know, small business, man. They, small business needs some help, man. You know, um, so we're just hoping we'll get through this, and, and we will, we will survive this, people. And we're coming together, and that's what it's about, man. Is just having fun. Oh, absolutely. Communities are usually yeah. really good about getting yeah. together and taking yeah. care of their small businesses. No. No. That's uh, WAB over there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And this is great. You guys are expanding too. You've uh, brought on another station. That's exciting. I'm born to ride's glad to expand with you. Yep, that's uh, that's something that uh, there's another teaser there, listeners. Okay, we haven't made an official announcement yet, uh, but we've been kind of teasing and hinting. Oh, sorry, we didn't. No, uh, but that's not fair. You and Tater had us all. What? Oh, come on, oh, we spill are. the beans. Okay, we are we are looking forward to it, but I mean, you know, it's you know, the boss hasn't given us the permission to make it absolutely official and tell the listeners exactly where that's going to happen. Maybe and where right we're next going. Thursday, we'll uh, since the cat's kind of halfway out the bag. Or Fester, you're going to get another black eye if we don't find out soon. <laughs> but we have been getting a lot of great feedback on the radio station here. It's uh, interesting that people do. Um, Really listen to the the AM radio. They like it. You know, that's talk radio and everything, too. I always say it's so. not your grandfather's AM radio. Yes, exactly. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very exciting. We actually, um, we had a younger lady cool, email the station. 
And she was like, her, she heard it. Her father loved it, asked for a T-shirt. So we mailed him out like this little gift packet. And so <laughs> and they're over in Orlando. Is that where it was? Orlando? <laughs> the T-shirt that was yes. the yes. gift bag. <laughs> yeah, the gift bag. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So there's more people listening. Oh, you just, it, it's, yeah. it's really amazing when you start meeting. And before this closed down, we spent 11 days at the Florida Strawberry Festival. And just literally hundreds of people walking up that you don't hear from on a day-to-day basis they Mm -hmm. don't call in and just oh i've seen i've seen the billboards love the station love Mm -hmm. it you know i mean so it that was that was a that was a great we were really pumped after that and then the The place shut down down. (laughs) the country (laughs) shut down you know Uh, but that's what that's how it goes sometimes yep yeah exactly bike week had to clear out pretty quick too (laughs) yes it did Mm -hmm. yep well, we've got a uh, caller on the line. You ready for the first one here now? Bring it. All right. Okay. Hello, caller. Who is this? It's Curtis. How are you guys doing? Curtis, this is this is a great call, people. I mean, this guy is a spark plug in our industry and, and a lot of other industries, man. This guy is calling. Curtis, you're calling from New Mexico, right? All the way from New Mexico? Wow. All the way, all the way from New Mexico. It's really hot here. It was about 100... 102 today i think and uh hopefully it's killing that coronavirus yeah man now, <laughs> now curtis um is the main guru at cranked up country and it's an, an unbelievable business that he's got and it's uh, he's gonna i want to i want to get the whole story curtis um if you can tell us exactly what cranked up country is all about well you know we we actually started in radio about 12 or 13 years ago with a show called Cranked Up Live, and, and we, were, we were in rock radio. And um, it was kind of a fluke deal, but uh, we got lucky, and we, we, we signed a syndication deal, and, and our show was on about 103 stations or, or so across the country. And uh, it just really exploded and did a lot of cool things and, and got to travel a lot, do a lot of, a lot of fun stuff. And after about, after about a decade in, in the rock business, uh, you know, Brad and I, my, my co-host Brad, we, we were raised on country music. And so we decided that we wanted to, uh, to give the country market a shot. And so we, we changed the name of the show from Cranked Up Live to Cranked Up Country and we retired and, and fired it back up as a country show. And, and, uh, we were blessed. We, we, we syndicated again. And, and I think we're on about 60 stations now. Um, you know, I, I Ron, I met you, um, through born to ride and, you know, we were really impressed with, with everything you guys were doing. And, and we watched all of this stuff and I, I'm really happy to say now that, uh, you know, we've partnered with born to ride on, on a bunch of things and you guys have actually come on board with the podcast, our podcast, and, and become a, a big part of that. And, and I want to thank you for that. We, we appreciate it. Well, you know, we're excited about it all, man, because we get that energy from you and that, that just uh, good, good mojo stuff, you know. But, um, you know, you're, I think you're not telling us everything because your podcast <laughs> alone <laughs> Your podcast alone is award winning. Not that you have secrets to and, hide, and some, Curtis. And <laughs> but you've some got of your awesome platforms stories. too, man. <laughs> Tell us where they can hear Cranked Up Country, and also what platforms you're on. But also, I want to get into the podcast a little more too, because we're playing the podcast on BornToRide.com, so people could go there and, and catch the new show every single week. Is that right? That's right, and and uh, you know now now with this partnership with you guys. Um, you know, the podcast is brought to you by Born to Ride. So it's, you know, it's, it's a real exciting venture between, you know, between us. And, you know, I'll tell you, you know, on the, on the radio show side, you know, we're on FM radio and, uh, you know, like I said, about 60 stations, I, you know, we've, we've really been fortunate. Um, you know, we've, we've been to the country music awards and the Texas country music awards. We were, we were nominated for, uh, broadcast personality of of the year last year with the tmca and um you know we've we've won broadcaster association awards and you know i mean all of that stuff it's it's all cool and it's a lot of fun to go see that but you know be a part of it but at the end of the day you know it's it's all about the listeners and the and the music and, and the nonsense we get to talk and 
um, you know, the podcast itself, when, when the podcast came off, it's different from the radio show. Um, I was totally against a podcast back in the day. I, I, they started telling me, you know, our, our management and, and, and stuff was saying, you guys need to do a podcast. And I, I just flat said no. And I was overruled, but they started taking, they started taking the radio show and they'd pull our, our voice tracks out of it. And, you know, cause as you guys know, on a podcast, you can't play music on the internet because, you know, whatever lawyer is, is mad about it, but they pulled the music out and put it on. And, uh, I, you know, I didn't really think it would do anything. And, and, you know, that thing really surprised me and, you know, it gets tens of thousands of listens, you know, a week and, um, you know, all the big guys picked it up, you know, Apple and Spotify and iHeart uh, media and, you know, all those guys took the podcast and started running with it. And, um, you know, it was, it was actually awarded like one of the top 20 podcasts of 2020 that you need to know about or listen to. And, you know, it's been a really fortunate ride so far on radio for us. And that's killer. And we're talking to cranked up country guru himself, Curtis McKinney. And man, um, what, you know, everybody's doing a podcast. Everybody thinks they need to do this and that, but not everybody's award winning. But so what is the art to it or what is, what makes it successful? How do you, you know, just <laughs> fill me in on that, man. What's that secret sauce to, to get in, get it in that groove that you're in? Man, it's gotta be Brad, you know, <laughs> and Brad is in Hawaii, right? You so say you got a, you yeah. got a real split screen thing going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's funny because as long as Brad and I have been on the radio together, for when we first started, I was actually doing it before Brad, and uh, I had a different co-host, and, and uh, we had just been picked up by this big 100,000-watt rock station, and and uh, I, I had to fire my co-host just minutes before I went on the air. It was just a crazy story, but um, I did that show solo, and Brad and I grew up together as kids. And he lived in Las Vegas, and and uh, I hadn't heard from him in years and years. He's actually a Brad's a really smart dude, and he was going to get into talk radio. And so, just out of the blue, right after I fired this guy, Brad sent me an email, and he said, uh, "You know, I'm fixing to get into talk radio. You know, do you have any advice or anything like that?" Because he knew I was in radio, and and I told him I was like, "Man, screw that! You know, come come be on the show with me. I need a new guy. You know." And, and he did, and it was uh, you know, the first couple of weeks. He was he was really shy, and he didn't say very much. But you know, now he just he's phenomenal, and he lives in Hawaii now. And so, the whole time we've done this show, we've never sat in the same studio. And uh, he's he's either been <laughs> sounds a like a good marriage to me. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing the chemistry that you Ron, guys let's have. Let's try that. <laughs> it, it seems like you're right there together. So, congratulations to you on that. But, um, you know, the chemistry is there, man. But, you know, you're a man of the world, so you're doing radio, you're doing promotions, and, you know, you've got all kinds of businesses going on since I've been talking to you. But, you know, I, I know you've got some coffee beans chilling in somewhere here <laughs> and roasting. But before I get to that, man, tell me about Hogfest, because that's really how we came together. Something you're doing in Carlsbad, New Mexico, which is a historic landmark um tourist trap you know so and then you got area 51 right down the road there so tell us about hog fest well you know we used to do hog fest years ago and it was uh I, we used to do it at this bar and you know and it would only hold about a thousand people maybe 1500 people and and it was just a uh, just a big party and and it was fun and and uh we did it for about five or six years maybe seven and uh the bar sold and so we have the uh, Performing Arts Center, Brad and I do, down here in, in New Mexico. And, and so we do concerts all the time and whatnot. And so we were busy, you know, doing all these other shows. And so I put Hogfest on ice for a while. Last year we brought it back. And we did four days. It was a four-day festival. And I think we had like 29 bands play, um, you know, national acts and whatnot. And, and uh, you know, we drew about you know, a little over 15,000, I think to this thing. And it was a, it was a huge success. So, you know, this year we've made it bigger, you know, obviously we met born to ride through this and which was, you know, that was, that was awesome. And, 
you know, this year we have bands like uh, Moonshine Bandits and The Lax and, um, you know, Saving Abel's going to be there. Um, gosh, I think we have about 15 bands or 16 bands playing. Uh, it's it's going to be, you know, Big Smo's coming. And what's the uh, date this on this? <laughs> It'll be August August the 27th through the 29th if they don't, you know, if we don't get shut down. I know. Anything, we're but. in that limbo thing, man. I'm, <laughs> You know, and, and then you're known to... Um, you know, and it's great that we're going to come out there and film it for Born to Ride, and we're going to market it. And people, you guys could hear Cracked Up Country podcast at borntoride.com anytime. It's there right now. You could check it out. And you know what? Once you start listening, you're gonna. It's going to be like your everyday fix every week because there's a new one every week. And and you guys have that um, chemistry, like I said. But you know, you're doing. Earth Day birthday, that's big, and that was right here in, in Tampa Bay, or actually Orlando, Central Florida. Orlando, yeah. You know, last year last year we were at Earth Day birthday there, and, and uh, you know, it was with Godsmack and, and all of those guys, and and uh, just a ton of fun. It's a huge, huge event. Um, you know, this year we'll be back down there, and it's actually the weekend after Hogfest. So, you know, we've got we've got to pack the tour buses, man, and... and and head your way and and so we'll be you know, we'll be in orlando i think we pack hogfest up like that sunday sunday night and leave late sunday night to go to orlando and and uh we should roll in there and start getting ready we're setting up the the one of the stages and we've got bands playing there we're bringing uh we're bringing colors couture with us with the ink master guys you know so we'll be you know they'll be tattooing over there by where we're at and uh you know, and and that's that's a really that's a really cool thing too. I don't know if you guys watch Ink Master on Oh on, yeah, uh, Paramount oh, yeah. Network, but, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so those guys, you know, a lot of those guys travel with us, and we will show up and we set that thing up, and we'll be at Earth Day birthday, you know, on that on that stage, and and uh, just a great event. You know, Shine Down's going to be there this year, and and yeah, didn't you have Fozzie going other. too? Yeah, uh, going to be there. Curtis, can you hang on with us, man? Because I want to, I want to get in a little bit more with what's going on with you and Born to Ride and the future stuff. And and we got to talk about, we got to talk about cranked up coffee. So stay tuned. We'll be right back here. <laughs> Hold on. I love coffee. Sure. <laughs> We got three minutes. Yeah, that does get loud. <laughs> I feel like for the go talk to him. for the camera. Just sitting. Uh, I know, I know, you, but I'm it's on, it's on and off. <laughs> what about? So it's not on these screens. So it's just on these. It's just He's on these him. right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Did it work out with the thing from Flash? He the, wasn't able uh, to really he help. Yeah. Chance it. Oh, because it's working good for him. With the video. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, did. we're going to need this camera to slim us down a little, okay? <laughs> you can, can see it? Yes. Oh. That's a, it's maybe got, a, it, yeah, sometimes it's a weird got angle. Good angle. It's got an angle here. I'm like, okay, That's well, why I'm, I'm over gonna, here. I'm out for the day. That's why I'm over the here. <laughs> we're black today. We need this. Part of it. <laughs> like maybe it's the shirt. <laughs> so we got Greg. Let Greg yeah. know he's gonna hang on a little bit. Hey Greg, you still there? Is that Greg from the vet veterans? Hello, Greg, are you still there? Do you know Chance is looking Hello, for somebody to help build you something? Still here? Okay. Too? One of We're his be, guys. Uh, going back to uh, Curtis for just a couple more minutes, and then we'll be coming. Yeah, over. tell him okay. to hang. You know, I was thinking maybe uh, Boss Hog would take on their podcast. Does he do that? Just like it's like talk radio. What do you mean? Program it in. I don't know. I mean, I'd have to. Oh, I see. What's see. already recorded? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because we got it on our our website. These guys have some big connection. I think they could in the future do something big with Boss Hog. Did you get your pictures sent hmm? over to them? Yeah, I sent them over. Okay. I haven't looked to see if they've been posted or not, but I, I sent the beast in. <laughs> so, 
So you want to ask him when we come back about the cranked up coffee? Sure. Say, so, you know, I'm a, I'm a coffee lover. Got to hear about this cranked, cranked up, up coffee. coffee. Yeah, cranked up coffee. We're 20 seconds out. <clears throat> Welcome back to, oh, okay, there we go. Welcome back to Born to Ride Radio. This is the Boss Hog Radio Network. I'm Fester Jenkins. I'm Mama Dukes. And we've got Ron and Debbie Galetti in the studio again, and we've still got Curtis on the phone here. You still there, Curtis? I'm still here, guys. Okay, (laughs) awesome. <laughs> Curtis is hanging in there. Curtis, before we left for the break, you mentioned something about coffee, cranked up coffee. Oh yeah, you know we. I I was never a big coffee drinker, but uh, you know I started kind of checking it out, and and uh, you know our our agency and stuff was like, you know, you guys need to start looking into this coffee market and and seeing what's going on with that, and and so we we dove in and and. Uh, you know, we started the the cranked up coffee uh, cranked up coffee company, and um, you know we've we've just got it. We're doing the K cups and the you know selling it by the pound and the bean, and we have a really cool roaster out of Wisconsin that, that where we roast all of our coffee, um, and uh, we're we're just about ready to roll this out. We're going to have it uh, online and. You know, what's really cool is we have a lot of uh, retailers and stuff that are going to be carrying it across the country and, um, you know, a lot of shops. I'm, I'm really stoked about it. And we're, you know, we're doing premium coffees. If, you know, if you're used to drinking like Folgers and Hills Brothers and stuff like that, <laughs> it's not that, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's cranked up. <laughs> it's not yeah, your morning you know, we, blend. <laughs> yeah, you know, we've got we've got one, one called the Grindhouse that's uh, like a, uh, a morning coffee that's, you know, really going to get you going. And then, uh, you know, and then we've got, uh, like a South African blend and an Ethiopian blend and, you know, a Colombian blend, you know, so there's, and it's all like grade A beans and all of that stuff. So we're really excited about it, you know, to see where that takes us. And we're going to have it at uh, Earth Day birthday. So I'll, I'll give you guys some. And I told Ron, I'm thinking in the Born to Ride booth at events, we're going to have to get some kind of nice percolator going and do a, a coffee cart Yeah, there. we can do tastings. But, you know, everybody's a barista these days. Everybody's a coffee aficionado <laughs> and all that. But where where's the best coffee beans in the world? Because I think there's a misconception about that. Can, can you straighten us out, man? Because I know you've been doing your research on coffee. <laughs> well, you know, I was really surprised because everybody, everybody right away goes to you know, it's you know, it's Brazil or it's Colombia or what? Um, it's actually Ethiopian coffee is is you know that's kind of where it was originated. You know, and and uh, man, they really have their act together with their beans and the way they you know the way they do all of that stuff. And uh, you know, I think when you when you really taste a good Ethiopian coffee like like what we're going to be doing, um, you know, it's hard to go back to a lot of other stuff. So man, this is this is um, going to be some high quality stuff, and we're looking forward to uh, cranked up coffee. You know, we're with Curtis McKinney, cranked up country. And how can they get in touch with you? I, I, I know there's info at crankedupcountryradio.com, but is that your website too, crankedupcountry.com, or, or what is it? It's, yeah, you can go to uh, crankedupcountryradio.com. Um, you know, you can find out all of the stuff that's going on with us and where we're going to be. You know, usually we're on tour most of the summer, or, or I am. Brad really, Brad, you know, Brad's got the, he's got the job, man. He's sitting in Hawaii. <laughs> Some and, pretty good uh, coffee in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> and, and other you know, things. And so they, like, book me out, and I, I, you know, I'll be in L.A., and I'll be, you know, in, in Las Vegas, and then, you know, you go over to Detroit, and, you come back for a few days and then you're gone somewhere else. And, and Brad sits in Hawaii the whole time, which is, you know, I, I guess that's great. Very work, tropical. But, <laughs> <laughs> but Brad will be in Orlando though with me. He's he's going to Earth Day birthday. So, we're, we're looking forward um, to meeting you guys and, and having some good fun with y'all and, and doing a lot. But you know, today we were talking, and and I know 
you're a young guy, you're an entrepreneur, you're, you're out doing a lot of things, jet flying, limousine riding, the whole nine yards. <laughs> but today you told me you were out back with some sheep and your turkey had some uh, little turkeys. I don't know what you call that. But, you know, <laughs> Curtis, what what is success to you, man? I want to ask everybody, what is their brand of success? What, what is success to you? You know, I... <clears throat> You know, I want to say that, you know, you always, you always strive, you know, to, to obviously do the best you can. And, you know, for me, I, you know, we went so long and I was, you know, I started my company, you know, my, my parent company on a $5,000 credit card and, uh, you know, I was broke and, and, uh, I knew what I wanted to do and, and I took the risk and, and, uh, you know, it's grown into something great and, you know, I think, I think just being comfortable with, you know, with yourself. I, I know in the beginning of everything, you're hustling and you're, you know, you're working and you're stressing about everything. And I think, I think once you get to the point where you realize that, you know, it's not really the money and it's not really the, you know, like the fame or, or whatever, it's, it's just, it's just being comfortable in your own skin, I guess. And, you know, I, you mentioned the turkeys and stuff, you know, I, I bought the, I bought the property kind of next to my parents and, uh, you know, I have, uh, you know, chickens and turkeys and, and sheep and goats and all that stuff here. And a working man, a blue collar <laughs> guy, man. And, and, and you really, also told me you have really a lot fun. of tattoos. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's really fun to just go out there and like sit in the field with them and, you know, all the, tur all the chickens and stuff will come around cause they're all big pets and, and, uh, you know, they just kind of hang out with you and yeah, you know, and that was, that was something you mentioned the tattoos. It's like, you know, I, I've got sleeve tattoos and all that stuff. And, you know, in the beginning, you know, when you first start doing this stuff, as much as I hate to say it, you know, people, people categorize you by that, you know, and, and it, it closed a lot of doors, you know, but I just figured screw them, you know, we're going to, we're going to move forward and, it was, it was funny. I made a deal, uh, earlier, well, last week, actually, we're, we're getting into the oil business and we bought some oil wells and, and, uh, you know, so, and it's, it gets to a point, like I said, it's not really about the money. It's just being, you know, comfortable with yourself and enjoying the people you're around and your good friends and, and meeting new people like yourselves, you know, that's, that's just, that just makes it fun. Well, that's killer, man. And you know what? Winners win inspiration and being creative and producing is so important man and that's why we wanted to bring you on today and talk about everything you have going on with the cranked up country everybody and the hog fest yeah everything you have going on but cranked up country check out the podcast at born to ride.com any last words curtis i you know what i i really want to say i really want to thank you guys number one for having me on the show today but but number two you know i really appreciate you know the, this whole business as, as you go through it, it's, it's partnerships and meeting people like yourselves, like I said, but you know, this partnership with born to ride and crank up country radio is, is big. Um, you know, you guys, you know, we followed you for, for a while now. And, and that's why you were one of our, you know, one of our first calls when we started talking about advertising hog fest and whatnot. Um, you know, we're honored to be a part of it and we appreciate you guys taking a chance with us and, uh, you know, anything you guys need from us, just let us know. And, and, uh, you know, I just want to say thank you. It was uh, we really do appreciate it. Well, we're very excited, aren't we, Deb? Yeah, yeah. It's been a nice uh, arrangement so far, so that's great. And we well, have I some, ripped, I, but I haven't ripped you off yet. You got to wait till I rip you off. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. uh, <laughs> get in, get in line. But, but there, there's some big, there's some big things Take coming too, man. You know, there, and and we're gonna include hog, uh, balls hog, and fester. You know, Mama Dukes is gonna be right in there too. We got a great thing going, and it's about people coming together. Can I testify on that, right? Oh, Amen. Here we go. Right. He's on some kind right. of coffee. Well, man, let, let's get it all going, man. I thank you so much for being a part of the show today. Hey, thank you guys for having me. And, uh, uh, you know, tune in on <laughs> tune in on borntoride.com, man. Check out Cranked Up Country. And, and if you guys need anything, let me know. Thank you so much. All right, all right man. Awesome. Thank oh, you. Absolutely. All right. Have fun with the chickens and the turkey. Yep. <laughs>
You're listening to Born to Ride Radio on the Boss Hog Radio Network. I'm Fester Jenkins. I'm Mama Dukes. And in the studio with us, we've got Ron and Debbie Galetti from the Born to Ride <laughs> Media <laughs> Monster. Okay. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. And you can have that for free. That's a freebie there. Media Monster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like the Boss Hog himself. <laughs> His enterprise. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> no, it, it's hard to keep everything in line. But, you know, to me, it's about people. And it's about great people coming together uh, with a common, you know, common goal to to uh, give quality service and you know produce what we produce and uh, take care of business, like Elvis says. Oh, absolutely. Well, I believe we've got Greg Blackwell on the line, and he's probably here to give us an update oh, yeah. on uh, what's going on in his neck of the woods. There, hello, Greg. Are you hey. still there? Hey, Fester. How you doing? Just fine. Looking forward to being out and about and meeting you again at uh, some of the events there. Yeah, like at Duke's Brew House. Yeah. Yum, yum. <laughs> yeah, man. Wednesday nights. <laughs> yes. First Wednesday of every month. That's coming up. Your I can't wait to see your guys' face. Well, Greg, how are you, man? You know, uh, Rangers lead the way, brother, and that's why we're talking to you, because Rangers <laughs> lead the way and, and lead us, brother. Take the perimeter. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of do like an update. And I, you know, I appreciate the fact that, that Balls Hog Radio and, you know, Born to Ride and BornToRide.com has given me like a platform to create like a neutral ground for all of the veterans organizations that are out there. I mean, I know Fester, when he opened up, he said there's like a transition that's happened inside of the motorcycle community, and it really is happening. Um, just because of the guys that are coming back from overseas and it's, it's guys are starting to come back together and, you know, talk to each other. They're reaching across the aisles. You know, it's not like the 1980s, you know, the, the old school MC and then the, the veterans motorcycle clubs and the motorcycle associations and everybody was kind of like separating themselves, but they're all actually starting to come together. So it, it, it's almost creating like a neutral ground. And I, I appreciate the platform that you've given me. Not only here, but also, you know, in, in Born to Ride magazine and Born to Ride dot com. I mean, it's, you know, Ron, Deb, you know, you guys are like true patriots and true Americans. I mean, you're focusing on, you know, what, what's going to help our veterans and stuff. And I just wanted to kind of, you know, share some stories with you. And I'm, I'm actually going to talk about what's going to happen in the next article that's that's out there. Um, and Ron, by the way, I'm going to send that to you this evening. Okay, brother. Uh, so, so I'll give you an example of what's happening. Uh, it's some, some wonderful things that's out there. The, the veterans community is actually coming together in the MC world and we're starting to reach across the aisle and we're starting to figure out what, you know, every motorcycle club, motorcycle association, riding club, riding association, all of those are, are starting to figure out where the right fit is for our veterans that are coming in together. So I got a phone call this week and just as an example that there was a, a, a third special forces group brother that was buried in a civilian uh, civilian cemetery and he was buried without a headstone. So I reached across the aisle and I called up the special forces brotherhood motorcycle club. And within 48 hours, we're two steps away of having a, a headstone placed in the, on his grave marker. Awesome. Um, That's awesome. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's, um, it's just kind of the way that we're all starting to come together. There's some great things in the future. I just got to have to get approval to talk about it, um, where the clubs are, are going to come together. Um, and then I can tell you that the, the next article is going to be, you know, you, you, thank you for giving me that one page that's there, that one column, so that I can actually share the veterans and the, the American community and that kind of stuff. So the next article is actually going to be with the veterans, uh, the VNV Legacy Motorcycle Club. They're writing one where they've got a project called Vet Zero that helps with veterans um, that you know are committing suicide. So you're going to get that, and you'll 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 see it this evening, and hopefully it'll be able to get time to get into the the magazine and then get into uh, BornToRide.com also. So there, there's a there's an entire group that transition that Fester talked about is actually coming together right now, whether it's because of what we're going through now or whether it's just that time where there's a whole bunch of veterans that are out there that need help. So it, I, I have, I, I'm usually on the phone between six to eight hours a day talking to different veterans, motorcycle clubs and associations and stuff for, for things that are happening. And we're going to slowly feed that in. 
and it's it's one of those things where even even Fester talked about it. it's like the, uh, the the vision of who we are that's out there in the motorcycle world. You know, the the guys that are out there are not something that you would see on a a Netflix show or something. They're they're guys that are actually out there willing to help, and they're doing everything they possibly can to to help any veteran at any time. And we're starting to learn, you know, who has the resources to do what. So that was a great example this week. And then the other thing, um, too, is one th- one thing that I want to do, I've had had two phone calls this week where, you know, there were veterans that were having issues, and I kind of had to talk them off the ledge. So anybody that's out there, whether you're just an independent writer or you're part of an organization, just reach out to your brothers and your sisters if you haven't heard from them in like two to three weeks, and because they they really enjoy you know that brotherhood and that sisterhood and that connectivity, and, and just just give them a call, just just call them and you know talk about the future. Don't talk about what's going on now. Just talk about what you plan on doing, and that way you, at least you stay connected. So that way there's not any issues that are out there, you know that that we're seeing more and more that's happening inside of the VA right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're you know, talking. We're talking right now to Ranger Greg Blackwell, who writes for Born to Ride. He's a part of our motorcycle community. Greg, how important is what you're talking about? How important is that to veterans right now, today? It's incredible. Um, the, the one of the keys to depression and to veteran suicide and the veterans, uh, you know, falling off the wagon or you know doing what they do is is actually connectivity. So one of the main keys is to reach out and talk. Mm-hmm. You know, it's difficult for us to, do, you know, to go out to a, you know, well, there's no events that are going on right now across the country. So, the, but just to reach out and stay connected, because when when you lose that connectivity, and then dealing with all of these these doctors that deal with PTSD and deal with depression and everything else, it's that number one key is connectivity. So you have to stay connected. You know, you. That one time that you reach out and, you know, grab that guy's hand or, you know, make that phone call, you know, that may, that may help them from, from making a bad decision. Um, so, Greg, you know, um, you said it all, companionship, being together. I got to ask you something. I know you have a special, very special companion with you. Victory. And it, <laughs> victory, is, and that's your service dog. And tell us a little bit about Victory, man. Tell us about your companion that, that, how how important is the that? Day and, I mean, people don't yeah. realize it, man. Tell us, man. Tell us what's going so, on. So, so actually, actually, Victory is my service dog. He's also a medical device for me. Um, he's my companion. And the, the backstory to it, several years ago, um, I was in the VA with, you know, high blood pressure, and I had some issues. And so the, um, I had just done a, um, a fundraiser for an organization that did service dogs. And the VA right now doesn't sponsor service dogs, but this organization that I did the fundraiser for to raise a dog because the dogs cost between twenty to thirty thousand dollars to raise to get them trained and, and, and to get them to a veteran's into a veteran's hand. Um, so they they came up there in the hospital, and as soon as they put this one puppy that I put into my lap, um, as soon as I did that, my blood pressure dropped. And then everything came back to where it was supposed to be. And then even my psychiatrist, the psychologist, and the, the medical team that was there, they were like, you know, just reviewing me to, to get me healthy and get me back again, um, said, we need to get him a service dog. So then I, it was posted on social media. And then there was an organization called Helping Out Our American Heroes. They call it HUA. Um, heard about it. And they're, they're actually friends of mine. They served with me in the, in the Ranger Battalions. They're like, we're getting him a service dog. So now when, when I went in, I was probably on seven or eight different medications, um, nightmare medications, blood pressure medications, antidepressants, all kinds of stuff the VA was like throwing on top of me. And since I've had victory, um, he's with me 24 seven. He travels with me, he flies with me. You know, he's on the airplane with me. Um, wow. but he, but, but he's trained to, He's trained to, like, wake me up if I have a nightmare. He's, he actually understands when my blood pressure goes up and he'll grab my arm. If he hears that, my, that I'm kind of stressed in an area, that he'll actually sit in front of me to distract me. If, 
um, with me having like hypervigilance in the veteran community, you know, it's something called hypervigilance. Um, he's actually trained to go, I can tell him to take me because I want to see the entire group instead of just being surrounded by people. Um, he he did, does something called block for me so that when somebody comes up behind me, he'll actually stop in and it, it distract them so that I know that when he moves backwards that, that there's somebody coming up behind me. And since that he's been that trained, um, I take zero, zero medications other than, like, vitamins. Awesome. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't take any type of nightmare medications, any type of antidepressants, any type of anything. It's, he, is, he is truly... Um, a savior for me. And then once I got off of all of those medications that I, um, I'll say it, I mean, the, the VA likes to just throw, you know, meds down your neck to keep you depressed. And then once you get off of all that stuff, then you can start enjoying the sunsets and the sun, you know, sunrises and that kind of stuff. So yeah, he's been an absolute blessing. Well, yeah. Greg, Greg, what you are is a leader, man. And you're very much of an inspiration because you, you're not only a veteran, but you've been affected by the things that you've done in your life, be, probably because of being a veteran. But but you're also reaching out and helping other veterans that have a problem and and, and need some help, right? Right, Deb? Yeah, and Greg, uh, since our last um, conversation, also there veterans. Everyone, when they hear the word veteran, they think of men. Mm, yeah. There is a women's veteran group out there, um, Liberty Dolls, and they'd like to start collaborating with you guys as well and helping some of the females you know, that are veterans as well dealing with a lot of things. So this is exciting. So it's bringing a lot of people together. Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I'm working with another organization now that, that we're going to bring in, um, the, of course, the, the – the lady veterans that are out there, they're, they're suffering through the same stuff that the males are. And I get that, but there's also another part of that too, that I'm starting to work with when, um, guys are coming back and they're, they're doing their tours and every time they come back, they change. So what they're doing is they're leaving behind them this wake of destruction when they have PTSD, the, the family doesn't understand it. You know, that's, and they, they actually destroy the family and the kids behind them because they don't understand. So, I'm doing a um, a weekend that's going to be a woman's empowerment retreat that's actually going to have a PTSD. One of the national PTSD clinicians is going to come in, and there's going to be people that are there that are actually going to teach them that it's not their fault. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a wave of destruction that we create behind us um, with, you know, with the PTSD that we have. So, and, and the females do the same way, too, you know, the, the, the guys and the girls. So there's a there's a whole different level that's right right behind that that nobody's really paying attention to. So I'm putting some effort into that one also. That's great. It, it, that's great. Yeah, man. And, and you know we can't thank you enough, man. Rangers lead the way, brother. And and you are a leader in everything you do. We're happy to be a part. We got to go to a break, man. But get let's get that thing rolling in the next issue, and we're gonna crank it up. We got a lot of things to do together, man. Because Rangers lead the way. Man, we have a ton of stuff, brother. All right. I All love right. you. Let's do it. Mama, Mama Duke, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take Th- care. Thank you, brother. Thanks All for right. the update, Greg. All, yeah. right. Yeah. All right, guys. Talk to you later. All okay. Right. Bye-bye. We need to get him into the studio sometime, too. Absolutely. With a dog. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's a nice guy. And so that there's nothing like just having good talk, you know. People call in.
To G's and Hog. <laughs> Welcome back to Born to Ride Radio on the Boss Hog Radio Network. I'm Fester Jenkins. I'm Mama Dukes. And in the studio, we've got Ron and Debbie Galetti there. Hiya, hiya. Uh, yeah. Back and uh, about, uh, about nine minutes left of the show. A lot of new things in the studio this week. Uh, Tater's got new Converse <laughs> shoes on. <laughs> Mama Dukes has pink headphones. Mm-hmm, yeah. Fester has a black eye. Fester, yeah. has, a, <laughs> Fester has a shiner. And, uh, and no bars have been open over the last couple and a, weeks. And so. a bum thumb. <laughs> no, I didn't say the thumb. Yeah. 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 All right, so um, uh, tomorrow. Is it tomorrow that the new the May edition will come out? Um, May, yes. Well, actually next week. So. Let's go in the print. We're yeah. finishing it up with, with the... Um, you know, with everything going on, we're kind of sitting back a little more than normal. So we're we're kind of just kind of getting everything together now, getting ready to go to print. Everybody wants us to hold just a little bit to get right. their message in. So we're like, okay, okay we could do that. Yeah, you know, we, how's the virtual bike show going? Oh, we an should, update on that. Yeah, yes. Eric, I talked to Eric today, and I think there's over a hundred and twenty or hundred and fifty entries. Awesome. Yes. So we're going to expand that into may we're gonna we're gonna expand it even further into may there's gonna be a two-page uh feature in the layout Mm -hmm. of the magazine to show some of these cool bikes and we're gonna have them all online and uh you know they've been just coming in man and eric's been doing a great job we're getting a lot from choparama uh, a lot of real quality bikes too but that's not to say it doesn't matter what you ride people there's a category for everybody as long as you're born to ride it doesn't matter what you're riding just just send them in. You can go to our Instagram, Facebook, email, info at borntoride.com, or just call the office, get the number, Google it, whatever. Eric will get you through what you need to do to get him the photos that he needs to do. <laughs> now, is this something you guys saw? I believe somebody said something about you guys carrying this on even after this is over with, like keeping it going on Instagram, Facebook? Possibly, but right now we're going to we're gonna expand it into May okay. because the winner is going to get a photo shoot with Eric Runyon, you know, to, to be on the cover of Born to Ride. And we're not charging anybody. But people, it's free. If it's free, it's for me. <laughs> what about you? You know, so, so it's actually free to the... We wanted to do that, to, to reach out, to give somebody something and not always ask for money or something like that. It, it's not a gimmick, man. It, it's, it's, if you're born to ride, if you're riding, if you got a motorcycle, it doesn't matter, like I said, what you ride, send it in. We, we really love to hear from the people, the riders, the biking community out there. I see, I, I see it on Facebook. It, I've scrolled through, and a guy on his Harley sitting in his garage got one of them big fans in front of you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the wind. <laughs> this is crazy, especially in Florida right now. The weather is so nice. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. 72 degrees right now. And the, the yep. days are longer. Yep. I That's kind of cool, actually, for, yeah. for Florida. It's 72. Yep. <laughs> it, it was, uh, wow. well, it was 59 and 60 this morning you know what i mean yeah. but uh no awesome weather this cool front that you know the rain that came in early this morning was pretty being True. pushed by this cool front and uh we've got this weather for a couple more days and then it'll warm up a little bit more there but uh that'd be more to your liking mama yeah. duke so. okay. the hotter the better <laughs> yeah. it gets hot what about mm-hmm. curtis when it, what did he say it was 104 degrees in new yeah, mexico I was in hearing Carlsbad, that. Yeah. Yes. you know and that's really cool we're getting callers from new mexico today and you know, what greg's talking about these are you know we're not just killing time here people we're we're really making a difference in people's lives or, or telling adventure stories or turning you on to some dynamic people with dynamic products. And we're going to do that every single week, man. Fester's driving this bus, and and, and we're going to keep delivering the, the passengers, right? Is that how it works? Oh, absolutely. And Mama yes. Dukes, man, she's making sure it's all right. Yeah. Driving the bus or riding the bike? <laughs> well, when you, yeah, riding the bike, the bike whatever. Bus. The with, bike bus. With the sidecar. <laughs> yeah. We're all in it. Yeah. <laughs> it's one large sidecar. <laughs> we got to get the... Uh, <laughs> The cartoonist to get that working on oh, that yeah. way. <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. We'll be- <laughs> yeah, and we, you know, they could go to bornride.com and check out Cracked Up Country. The 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 podcast is, is really cool. You know, once you start listening, it just pulls you in more and more. And these guys, and when you know Brad is in Hawaii, 
and you know curtis is in new mexico but it if you listen to it it's like they're right there but they're talking about topics going on with all of us every day it's it's, it's awesome chemistry i've listened and uh the guys really enjoy it uh I've enjoyed listening to them. I mean, now, you know, did you know they were in two different places, or did yes. they just? Oh, no, no, did? they okay. actually they actually even talk about yeah. it there okay. in the show. There, you know, well, otherwise, I know you know, he was they'll... like, you you can't even tell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, and can't you tell. can't. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, these guys are professionals. They're good at it. Mm-hmm. And then we have um, Born to Ride live on Facebook every Tuesday night, and that's seven to eight with Dave Flash Morgan. It's at Born to Ride TV magazine, our Facebook page. This week's guest, you see, we're thinking ahead now. This week's guest is Nefarious James. Nefarious. And, yeah, and I mean, he writes a column in the magazine. He's he's a real deal guy. He's rode with Harley uh, Davidson's forever, but he's rode with motorcycle clubs. He's been a big advocate of A-bait and biker rights. He's a blue-collar guy. He rides a panhead, man, mm-hmm. and he's got another bike, too. But, I mean, real deal, loyalty. And just, he's going to tell it like it is, people, so you better tune in and, you know, read some of his stuff, and that's what we're going to get a flavor of that. And every week, we're going to be throwing different stuff at you guys. And you all know, Aunt Jemima ain't nothing without her pan. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's so, pan James, uh, James has got it. <laughs> oh, he, he, he's going to come into the studio, and he's, and you know... And next week after that, we even have a guest set up, and I'm not going to say who it is yet, oh. but it's coming from oh. Burbank, California. Oh. Teaser. Teaser. Burbank, California, <laughs> in the Hollywood realm. And we're bringing an international, international movie director, an international movie director on set next week, Ooh. Born to Ride Radio. I'm guessing Deb ain't big on surprises. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even get it out. Who, who, who is it? Who? She oh, knows who it is. She's just trying to work I'm it. I'm like Dragnet. Yeah. Uh, just the facts, man. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, Boss Hog and Boss Hog Radio Network is, is just, you know, people are talking about it, man. We're, we're, it was on TV. It's on TV again this week. You've been yeah. awful yep. gospely today. Gotta testify. People have been talking about it. <laughs> you, you gotta have energy, man. You know, you gotta have energy. Boss, yeah. Boss Hog's been a great guy to work with. We yeah. appreciate this. Oh, it's been a, it's been our pleasure. Yes, very much. I've been looking forward to it. Uh, you know, just looking forward to what's happening. What's, what's going to happen? What's going to? What's the future? Going, yes. What does the future hold? It's like it's a surprise. Like once we were able to go back out, like stepping back out into the unknown. We're, <laughs> yeah. we're born to ride. Yeah. Here we are. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> no doubt about it. You've been listening to Born to Ride Radio on the Boss Hog Radio Network. I'm Fester Jenkins. I'm Mama Dukes. And Ron Galetti. And Deb Galetti. Uh, thank you guys thank y'all for, for coming having, in. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, no, we, we wouldn't miss it for the world. It's fun work with you guys. Okay. We gotta get some food and snacks next week. Yeah. Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> we'll make sure we have them. Okay. <laughs> You can always join the conversation at 863-225-2000. Radio, TV, industry, adventure, events, magazine, social media, and much more. Can you take a picture of me? All new, borntoride.com. Yeah, I have to say, Born to Ride has been a what, big influence do. on my trailer sales in the last two or three months. It's been nothing but a big surprise. I mean, the magazine articles, everything in the commercials. Tell it's been nothing but this. the best of help to me in my business. Is your business becoming invisible? Create a great advertising relationship today with Born to Ride. Call 888-795-5779. I know. I looked up and I was like, 740 